Welcome to the Crypto News. In today's video, Raul Pal gave his take on what he sees coming for both the macro market and the crypto market. Raul believes the slide in the macro economy will lead to a bull run in the crypto markets for a few reasons. I've got as clear a view as I could possibly have, you know, nothing is a certainty, but for me the macro is rolling over. By that I mean we're going into recession. We should see the things like the ISM survey and other things start falling apart pretty quickly. The forward-looking elements are falling apart already. We're seeing it globally. So that's growth evaporating. Alongside that, the narrative hasn't caught up. Most commodities are down between 30 and 50%. And I've been talking about this on Twitter. I've been writing about it for a well period of time. Is Everyone's long and expecting oil to go to $200. Um, I think there's a washout coming and it goes down to 60 So that's the last inflation story. Everything else from the, from the raw goods then comes into the supply chain and then eventually starts fading. So we're going to see that inventories because people build massive inventories after COVID. Those inventories are now unsold because of the economy slowing down and inflation eating disposable income. So we've seen it from Walmart, Amazon and others. They're going to start discounting inventories to try and shift it. People are laying off staff. So the macro cycle is going to get to the ugly phase. Okay, why is that making Raoul bullish? Well, because the outcome to that is as inflation comes down and bond yields fall, liquidity conditions improve. And what drives financial markets at the macro level the most is liquidity conditions. We've just gone through the largest tightening in financial market history because the rate of change of interest rates going up was the fastest ever. Mortgages are back to where they were in 1996 and shocking. Then the dollar went up at a rapid clip, which is a tightening of financial conditions, and then commodity prices went up. So basically, everybody's suddenly skint, as an Englishman would say. Nobody's got any money, and the economy implodes. So the forward-looking indicators suggest to me that this goes off a cliff fast until we probably bottom Feb, March next year. That's the economy. Now, forward-looking assets job is to look forward. So one of the reasons crypto digital assets went down was because discretionary spending came out of the market. So if you think of the legions of dollar cost average retail investors and just think of their rent or mortgage payments went up, their shopping bills went up. So suddenly, or if they were foreigners, the dollar went up. So suddenly, how the hell can they buy as much dollar cost average in crypto? They don't. They don't. So they stop. So what happens is you've removed a huge amount of buying power. So as these conditions change, that changes. Also, the other big players in the space now, the hedge funds, the crypto, um, uh, the, the macro funds, and then the institutions, well, they're also a function of liquidity. So when liquidity is more available and cheaper for them, they can apply um, more, more leverage, essentially, in their portfolio. So what we end up with was a position where the big thing that correlates to Crypto market overall is some definition of liquidity, and you can use M2, global M2 year on year. That looks pretty much like Bitcoin year on year or crypto market cap year on year. We're at the very bottom. It usually turns around at this point because eventually the outcome is central banks have to provide liquidity in a recession because there's no liquidity. So forward looking assets like crypto are picking it up. So it, they also have perfectly correlated to the turning point in the inflation cycle. So they kind of time the bottom and I think it's time the top. So basically, I think crypto is saying, OK, inflation has now peaked and therefore the marginal pressure from from tight liquidity is gone. So my view is with let's give it a probability, 70 percent probability. So that's a pretty high conviction that the low is in um, and therefore we're starting the upside cycle. So the macro, I think for me, even though everyone thinks, oh my God, it's terrible, the equities are going to sell off. Well, the equity side of the equation, that correlation with equities is, was actually a co correlation to liquidity. They're all actually correlated to the macro cycle. Can equity sell off further? Yes. Can crypto decouple? Yes. We saw that in, 20, in March 2020, that crypto started going up when equities were going down because crypto is more forward looking. However, equities have actually priced in quite a lot already. So it's not 100% clear whether equities need to go down or not. So I did a Twitter poll recently with like 20,000 people responded, which was, do you think equity markets have further to fall? 70% of people thought so. 
And I said, are you underweight where you typically would be or in line and 70% of people are underweight? Well, if 70% of people think the market's going to fall and 70% are underweight anyway, who's left to sell? Sure. Yep. So that's, I mean, every, and, and it was the same with crypto. Yeah. I mean, every market at the end of the day is, is a, you know, a story of marginal buyers and marginal sellers, right? Exactly. And, uh, and uh, yeah, historically, it's always very difficult in the moment, but historically, these are, you know, peak fear correlates very well retroactively with, with good buying opportunities long term, you know. Um, yeah, there's there's so many directions I could go off of everything you just said and, and, and made, me, made me think of a lot of different questions. One of them is, you know, just in, in terms of going back to the macro, in terms of the inflation story, um, you know, definitely you saw like the, the news out of Walmart, out of Target in terms of inventories and, and forward looking sales and, and um, you know, stocks all got crushed on, on, on Target's announcements, on Walmart's announcement, let alone what previously happened with um, – you know, big tech and and and, uh, and multiple compression, but you know, inflation to me is interesting because of the COVID dynamic, and I think there is a lot of validity to you know supply chain issues as someone who's been building a house for the past eighteen months and you know buying new cars and and things like for my wife and things like that. And there's there's still nothing on lots, you know, and, and GM is sitting there with massive amounts of unfinished inventory because you know they can't get semiconductors. And, you know, you look at prices of um, you know, from eggs, milk, bread, sandwiches, you know, like normal food um, uh, t- type thing. So how much of, of do you think we can almost see a decoupling in inflation where, um, you know, discretionary spending, retail goods, things like that, you know, uh, drop potentially precipitously, but you still have supply chain issues and, and other things that keep um supply tighter and and still an inflationary environment in autos food uh, computers you know any, anything else there i have bad news for you if you're not rich by now you're screwed and if you're in debt you're even double screwed how so you might wonder well the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich the mega corporations the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have, and I multiplied with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.